Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do something really exciting. We are going to find an integral representation for our boy, the Dirichlet eta function. And the Dirichlet eta function, we didn't really explicitly introduce it up until now, but we have seen it already. And this thing is used to actually analytically continue our Riemann zeta function, okay? To not the whole complex plane, never mind. So what exactly is the Dirichlet eta function? Well, we were deriving two identities before, but I want to take a look at one certain identity, this one right here, okay? This has been a variant of a Putnam integral. Take a look into the description if you don't know what I'm talking about. And we were kind of landing at this alternating Riemann zeta function right here. So you see we have this alternating term up here and we found out that we can actually express this sum right here as nothing but this. Okay, Riemann zeta function times a certain factor. And this thing right here, this whole term, this sum in itself is absolutely convergent for the real part of s being stri uh, strictly greater than zero, if I remember correctly. But despite that, this thing right here is called the Dirichlet eta function. So the first thing we can actually note is that this term right here is the Dirichlet eta function and also it's equivalent to the sum. Also, we once derived a crazy ass double integral representation for the Riemann zeta function on the unit square. It, it looked like this right here. And what we want to do today, we actually want to define ourselves such a thing right here, such an integral representation, just for the Dirichlet eta function. And I've written out both of those because you see, we also had a general thing right here, being um, a little competitive integral in Putnam, but with a negative sign right here, so one minus e to the x. Okay. <clears throat> and this evaluated, I'm terribly sorry, to gamma times the Riemann zeta function. So it would just make sense to consider kind of this integral right here that we have derived before, but with a positive sign down here, okay? Instead of a negative sign. So turning around the signs here and maybe we can actually end up with an integral representation for the Dirichlet eta function. This is how I derived it on my own actually. So. I knew about this thing right here and I tried it out with a positive sign and voila, I kind of ended up with the Dirichlet eta function. So this is what we are going to do now. This was a little motivational speech, a little bit, um, yeah, a little introduction to what we are going to do today, a little motivation and how we are going to get started actually. So I want you guys to remember how we have derived this thing right here in the first place. So what we basically did, we were defining ourselves a certain function and we were saying we are going to take a look at a function being, well, x times t to the p of power over 1 plus x times t, okay? But with a negative sign. We, we did it with a negative sign right here when we derived it for the Riemann zeta function. Like I said, this time we want to consider it with a positive sign in here. What we basically did, we turned this into the geometric series and we took a look at what we actually got. So what we want to do, we want to integrate this thing right here on the unit square. So from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, dx dt. And then we were turning this into our geometric boy, an infinity boy. And on this interval, both of those converge. So both variables. So we can just use a single integral basically, call this thing x times tu, and then we are fine. So this thing right here is nothing but um, infinity boy from zero to infinity, x times t to the p of power. And then we are going to have, well, geometric series tells us that this is nothing but, okay, we have to place a negative sign here. So it's negative times negative x times t, negative times negative in any field is positive. I made a proof on that, take a look at that. So this is going to give us negative one to the k of power in this case, and x times t to the k of power integrate with respect to x integrated with respect to t. I hope you can see where all of this came from. Here's the thing. Okay, at first we can bring those two together to get x times t to the p plus k of power. Okay, that's, that's something we can actually do. Also, in the radius of convergence, our um, 
our infinite sum, our geometric series, our Taylor series expansion converges uniformly, meaning we can simply interchange this limit right here and those integrals without any restrictions, since this thing right here converges uniformly. Also, we can bring negative one to the cave power to the outside. It's just a constant. So my point is that we are going to end up with a sum running from k equals to zero to infinity, negative one to the cave power. Then we are going to get a double integral from zero to one, zero to one of x times t to the p plus cave power integrated with respect to x integrated with respect to t. What you can basically do, well, this integral over x is independent of t, so you can drag this t to the p plus k power in here, integrate with respect to t at first and then with respect to x at first. No matter what you do, you are going to end up with the vector p plus k plus 1 after integration down there in the numerator, but squared. Okay, just, just give it a shot, just integrate those polynomials, take a piece of paper, try it out for yourself, and we are going to end up with our infinity boy, yet again, of negative one to the cave power. Also, like I said, we are going to increase our exponent by one, so p plus k plus one, but we are going to have this factor squared, multiplied together, because, well, we can Fubini this shit right here, okay? <laughs> and then we are going to have x to the p plus k plus one of power, from 0 to 1, basically I'm going to put it here, times t to the p plus k plus 1 power from 0 to 1. Okay, oh, yeah, may maybe it's up there in the numerator, I really don't care, it's multiplicative. So if we plug 0 into here, it's just a polynomial, it's going to vanish on the 0 terms, same thing here. And if we plug 1 into here, well, 1 to any power is just 1. So this overall is going to vanish and we are going to end up with this thing right here. So let me conclude this. We are going to give this integral name. We are going to call it i with little index p right here, being nothing but, okay, on the one hand, it's the unit square integral, x times t to the p of power over one plus x times t dx dt. But on the, uh, on the other hand, it's nothing but this sum right here, this, this alternating sum that we have just derived. So that's the sum running from k equals to zero to infinity of negative one to the k of power over p plus k plus one squared. Okay, coolio, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And you see, if we let p go to zero in this case, we are basically going to end up with, well, this sum right here. Uh, this negative one to the k of power over k plus one squared. You can change the index, to, uh, k, k plus one being equal to n, for example, and you are actually going to end up with the Dirichlet eta function of two in this case, if we let p go to zero. This is the same thing that we did with the basal problem, okay? So nothing really special there at the moment, but what we want to do, we want to use the Leibniz rule for integration now, meaning we want to differentiate this integral and also this right-hand side because it's an equivalence relation with respect to p and see if we can see a certain pattern. So let us move on with this. So we are going to differentiate i of p with respect to p. This is nothing but. Okay, our upper and lower bounds are independent of p, meaning we can just interchange those limits. Also, yeah, it's it, it probably works out that you can interchange limits. I, I don't really have an argument for this right here at the moment. Never mind. let's interchange the limit and let's partially differentiate this integrand with respect to p. If you don't know what the Leibniz rule is, take a look into the description. There's probably a video regarding this. <gasps> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. X times t to the p of power is nothing but e to the ln x times t times p. Okay. And what we can basically do now, we can differentiate this really easily. So meaning we can preserve our exponential function and also we can track the ln of x times t down. Okay, so that's nothing but the integral from zero to one of the integral from zero to one, then we are going to get natural log of x times t. And this exponential function being preserved is nothing but x times t to the p of power over one plus x times t integrated with respect to x integrated with respect to t. Also, it's, it's, it's getting really warm in here. It's spring at the moment and it's getting warmer and warmer every day. 
We also want to differentiate this thing right here with respect to p. If you're not certain how to differentiate that, this thing right here, this, this fraction is nothing but p plus k plus 1 to the negative 2 power, okay? That's, that's just a constant. Also, like I said, our sum converges uniformly right here. We have talked about this before on our interval, meaning there we can actually interchange this differential and this infinite summation. Overall, we are going to end up with, okay, if we differentiate that, we are going to get a factor of negative two. I'm going to put it like this. This is negative one to the first power. This is nothing but two, but two is nothing but two factorial. Okay, we have talked about this before. That's why I'm rushing through it a little bit. And then sum running from k being equal to zero to infinity of, okay, the, the inner derivative of this thing is just one. So yeah, by the chain rule, we just multiply by one. This really doesn't matter. Negative one to the kth power over p plus k plus one to the third power. Okay, this is the first thing. Let's do one more iteration and let's see if we can see a certain pattern. Meaning i double prime of p. It's nothing but by the same arguments, interchange stuff, integral from zero to one, zero to one of natural log squared, in this case, x times t, x times t to the p of power over one plus x times t integrate with respect to x, integrate with respect to p. Once again, we are going to drag the negative three to the front, leaving us with negative one squared in this case. Okay, let's put it like this. And also we are going to get three factorial sum running from zero to infinity of negative one to the kth power over p plus k plus one to the fourth power. Meaning if we generalize this. So, so this is going to go on. You can probably prove by the principle of math mathematical induction that this indeed holds. We are going to get for the nth derivative. So the nth derivative of our i, that is nothing but integral from zero to one, integral from zero to one. On the second derivative, we had natural log squared. On the first derivative, we had natural log to the first power. On the zero of derivative, we had natural log to the zero of power. So meaning we are going to get the natural log to the nth power x times t, x times t to the p of power over one plus x times t dx dt. Also right here, this is negative one squared. So same powers as here with the natural log. So giving us negative one to the nth power. On the second derivative, we had three factorial. On the first derivative, we had two factorial. On the zero of derivative, we had one factorial. Meaning overall, we are going to get n plus one factorial and a sum running from k being equal to zero to infinity, negative one to the k power over p plus k plus one. On the second derivative, we had a four right here. On the first derivative, we had a three right, right here, okay? On the zero of derivative, we had a two right here, meaning that's nothing but n plus two. I'm running out of um, writable space right here. That's why I'm going to erase a bit of stuff and you can think about the next step. It's pretty analogous to the stuff we did before with the Riemann zeta function. So yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking similar, but it's a really important integral representation. That's why I'm talking about it. So I've just erased one part of the uh, blackboard because yeah, we can just continue from here. What I want to do, I would like to ignore the left hand side right here with this IP. Okay, this doesn't matter anymore. It's just um, to show you guys that we can differentiate something. But here, what I would like to do, I would like to let P go to zero in the limit. So this chunk right here is going to go to one. And also we are going to get rid of our P right here. I did this before. I argumented this before because we could extract actually our Dirichlet eta function from it. And also I would like to make a little change of index. Namely, I would say that um, we would like to get this n plus two being nothing but s. So bringing it into a form that's quite usual for the Riemann zeta function, shit like that. So we want um, s be nothing but n plus two. Okay, little transformation. Meaning for our n, that's nothing but s minus two and n plus one is nothing but n minus one. Okay, um, uh, s, s minus one, s minus one. Okay, then we are going to get, we are going to have an integral from zero to one, integral from zero to one of the natural log 
to the s minus 2th power, x times t, over 1 plus x times t, integrated with respect to x, integrated with respect to t. Also, we are going to get negative 1 to the s minus 2th power. That's negative 1 to the s power over negative 1 squared, but negative 1 squared is nothing but positive 1, leaving us overall with a nice simplification being nothing but negative 1 to the s power. Then we are going to get, um, I'm, I'm going to put it here, s minus 1 factorial. I said it before, but we can bring this into a more cool form. So if you want to be fucking badass, then you say that this is nothing but gamma of s. Our good old friend, the gamma function I derived it before. Take a look at that video, it's pretty fucking dope. Also, we are going to have a sum running from k equals to 0 to infinity of our main boy, negative 1 to the k power over. Then we are going to get um, k plus 1 to the s power. That's why we did the change of variable. Also, like I said, you can make a change of index. Let um, k plus 1 be equal to n. Then you see if k starts at 0, then n is going to start at 1. Okay, so we're going to change this. Then we are going to get k to the s power in this case. And also we have to raise this power of negative 1 to 1. That has been a lot of work up until now. And we are basically done with this right here. Okay, so you see this thing right here is nothing but our Dirichlet eta function. And we are going to denote it as eta of s in this case. And this right here is basically our finished integral representation for this thing. I hope I didn't make any mistakes on this one right here. If I did, please let me know down there in the comments or you can see a little um, annotation right here. So you can basically solve for this right here. Negative 1 to the s power is never going to be equal to 0. So divide by that. It's the same as negative 1 to the s power once again. And also we have this uh, gamma of s. Divide by it. It's part of natural numbers. So this thing right here is not going to be equal to 0. Um, yeah, so you can divide by it safely. And then it will allow you to have your integral representation for this thing. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel if you like. We are going to actually solve the Dirichlet eta function of 1 right here. Because you see, for our Riemann zeta function, if we were looking at the Riemann zeta function of 1, this is actually going to be the harmonic series, which, well, goes to infinity. This thing diverges. But here, the Dirichlet eta function of 1 is actually going to converge to a very nice value, actually. So, so we are going to talk about this very soon. I'm going to present you two ways probably. But yeah, up until then, um, buy those t-shirts I created and support channel on Patreon. Click on those Quora questions I post from time to time. You can support the channel actively this way without spending any of your money to your baba right here. And well, up until next video, have a flamber day. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Ciao.